You are looking at nine maps from five different centuries, layered over the surface of the earth. Together they represent various interpretations of the 17th century New England that I used to study the manhunt for two English major generals responsible for the execution of King Charles I. An article describing my work in the University of New Hampshire undergraduate research journal Inquiry is linked in the description below. This video uses Esri arc scene animations of maps that I have assembled to provide a demonstration for the concepts discussed in the article. The historical maps have all been georeferenced, or pinned to the face of the Earth, using latitude and longitude coordinates. The historical maps are oriented to the current landscape by matching recognizable points on each that GIS then uses to stretch the historical map to fit. Using elevation data derived from satellite LIDAR surveys, the maps are draped over the modern topography. Since some of Stiles' maps included in his book on the regicides cover just acres instead of miles, orienting them can be difficult. Now these are firmly pinned onto not just his larger maps of Southern Connecticut, but on the face of the earth itself, along with the approximately 50 other maps I have geo-referenced. Map 3 on the right is unlike any other map of the regicides in New England made until now. In maps 1 and 2, the pixels hold no more meaning in the computer than ink has on paper, relying on human interpretation rather than programmed measurable value. I might as well have printed out the map and drew on the labels myself. There is no geographical context to this map beyond what one's imagination can add. However, Map 3 required little specific input from me, only abstract rules which are applied to the knowledge of history that I provided the Geo database with. I asked the program to show me where Ezra Stiles thought the regicides visited New Haven, and when, and what order, and with Stiles' map in the background. This is the difference between a map being a helpful visual reference and an index that condenses books of information into a database. This application of GIS is fundamentally the reorganization of information by forming new geographical connections within existing data. My task has been to extract the observations that are measurable in four dimensions from these texts. I say four dimensions because one of the most important developments in GIS technology has been the relatively simple addition of a time dimension to the map via time slider, or a basic timeline in which one clicks to advance through time, just like one through pans through space, revealing changes in spatial relationships through time. The program can read and interpret dates from the spreadsheets well enough to render the shadows of West Rock as they ap would appear at sunset on the day the regicides left it for the last time in August of 1661. In these attribute tables and the associations between them, in the case of Ezra Stiles' work alone, are 40 locations, 300 events, and 20 people. Each entry in the database has its own notes and bibliographical information attached. I can ask when any of the most important New England political figures met with Whaley and Gough and the program will respond with a map that graphically represents the spreadsheets. In Stiles' case, by consolidating an entire book's worth of information to ordered spreadsheets, what was once written off as rambling speculation can now be seen as the consistent and painstakingly researched, albeit disorganized, work of a passionate historian. The steps that I took to figure out how many of these maps are oriented need to be reproducible, so each GIS map must have metadata explaining why the map is so. Much of this work is able to be viewed by the public on the website I've created that is linked in the description below. This is an animation that includes eight maps that Stiles produced and concludes with my reconstruction of the Hatchet Harbor Refuge that GIS allowed me to rediscover after two centuries of obscurity. The largest maps seen here cover all of New England, while some maps are the floor plans of houses. All this is now standardized to fit on a single giant framework. Instead of a single authoritative account of what happened, I have tried to represent the facts as each of the major players saw them, in order to better explain the motivations of the various ministers, bureaucrats, royal commissioners, and the regicides themselves, who experienced this time in New England firsthand. These are not imperfect versions of the objective truth of these events, but windows into the subjective experiences to decide how one was to react in this perilous situation.